Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you are, welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 404. Okay, with us tonight, um, no, sorry, each week um, we uh, review the questions and answers given on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight, we have... Masataki Wasa. Masataki is webmaster of uh, wasaweb.net. Uh, he's uh, based in London. He's also a Google product expert uh, on the AdSense uh, community. Um, you can find Masataki at wasaweb.net. Tim Kappa uh, is uh, based about 100 miles north of Masataki. Uh, he is also a uh, Google product expert on the Google My Business uh, community. And um, you can find Tim at onlineownership.com. David Rosam, you can find at davidrosam.com. Well, sort of, when he, when he builds more on his website. <laughs> um, and David uh, is based in West Sussex, uh, in the sunny south of uh, the UK. Right, let's get cracking. We've got nine uh, questions tonight. Um, the first one is: It's titled "Has any anyone gone through a rebrand name change?" Um, Oh, a name change that was not an SEO disaster for a local brick and mortar business. I have wanted to change our name for years, and I'm just scared of the damage it could do. Well, in general, um, changing a, a name, moving the site to a, a new domain uh, presumably with it um that's fairly uh um if you do it properly it's fairly easy fairly reliable um but if you do it wrongly it can cause all sorts of damage um so if you're going to do it yourself um, make sure you read up if you're feeling that uh if you're not feeling sure about this, then definitely get yourself a, a professional in who will do the do it properly. Um, it's that's from the you know the SEO point of view. I, I can't help you really with um, finding a branding agency, um, but um, you know a branding agency will change your uh, your name to something good um, and will give you all the design you need. Um, but from an SEO point of view, um, moving to a new domain is something that uh, that we do. Um, but um, uh, we do as SEOs, not we as dumb SEO questions answerers. <laughs> um, though individually it's something we do. <laughs> what am I talking about? I'm just digging a hole, I'm waffling. Um, I'm not sure whether it's worth going through the uh, the the uh, the important things. The important things are things such as keeping the same content on same on the same places within the, the structure. So your URLs are basically the same as uh, they were before, but on a different uh, different domain name. Um, um, if you can do that, uh, because your your business is more or less the same, but just has a new name, um, that's that will save you a lot of problems. Um, then you do uh, you do uh, a redirect from your old domain uh, to your new one, crudely. Um, but you just make got to make sure you got it right. Um, as I say. Um, but uh, if you're doing your 
rebrand because you're just a bit uncomfortable with your uh with your 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 current brand um make sure that this is not just boredom make sure there's a good strategic business reason to make that change um try try it out with some of your customers see what they think maybe they think whatever your business is called is is brilliant and they like it so in that case save yourself some money put your money into some nice new content uh, rather than uh, paying for a rebrand and the uh, SEO work that requires uh, moving to a new domain. Um, from my point of view, from a local point of view, um, don't go and create a new GMB page like a lot of people uh, unfortunately do. Uh, just change the name in your current one when an actual rebrand occurs. So your domain goes across, your new signage goes up. Just update the name and the web address uh, on your current GMB listing. Uh, then once that is done, that's when you need to go through all existing or pre-existing citations across the web and update them. So Yell, Touch Local, um, Yelp, all of those where you may have created them or they were scraped and created over the years by these directory uh, business directories. Um, uh, track them down, update your name on those, your address you won't need to, uh, but your URL would also be very handy if maybe you've changed a number or anything like that, or your logo, update the logos on those uh, and work your way through. So that way you changing it across the web, not just on your site. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, David. All right, um, if Masataki doesn't want to add anything to that, uh, let's move on to the next. This one is from Nathan Gadai. Um, he uh, says, he asks a question, it's titled, I have thousands of affiliate links that are using a 301 uh, to, to my domains. Uh, does that count as a backlink? They are follow links. Uh, how would it show on the Google Search Console, internal or external? He said, I use subdomains with a 301 to a referral URL that redirects uh, to the root domain. Is it just me? My or you know, am I terribly confused that I don't really understand the situation? Um, I, I'm going to join you on the confused bench, Massa. Um, I'm sitting here trying to figure out what's going on. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, so thousands of affiliate links, where are they? Uh, you know, where do they exist? They are being 301 redirected to is domains plural um i mean and these links are follow links so it's not labeled as ads or sponsored or no follow mm. How so the, these are these are links from his affiliates going into one of his domains that are being 301 to other of his domains? And so, and then he wants to know how it, sh how it would show up on Google Search Console, internal and external. Um, I mean, if it's from different domain, it would be external. And Google Search Console of which of his domains? If they're um, I assume it's a destination. Yes. 
Well, it, it, should, yeah, it, would be, it will be external in each case, won't it? Yeah, yeah and if it's so the 301 redirected, then you'd say via, doesn't it? You know, it do, Google does provide you with the intermediate link as well, mm. if I recall correctly. If he's redirecting, it seems as it sounds as if he's if he has as if he has two redirects going on. So one from the external side pointing to one of his sites or subdomains, which then is then again redirected to the root. It sounds as as though there are two redirects taking place. Oh, I would have thought there was only one. Because he says he I use a sub you know, he uses subdomains with three or one redirect to a referral or that redirects the root domain. So so you know, so affiliate links, which we presume to be external, it's on not on his side. Mm. That's so someone clicks on example.com slash affiliate slash whatever, then that's three year one redirected to his domain.com whatever. But it sounds as if then that is in turn redirected to the root with the referral of the original external domain. That's the referral URL. But then that doesn't seem to make sense either. Mm. I, I I think that as these, I, I, I think let's take a step back. Let's let's stop getting lost in the in this picture that we can't see properly. Um, none of these are natural links, really, are they? The the the, the affiliate links are commercial ones. Um so I would think that none of these were, were, would count without understanding, without needing to understand what was going on structurally. No, that's true, yeah. I mean, and then I think, and it goes to the, if you like, the, the biggest question, what is the actual question in this question, if that makes sense? You know, does he yes, want to know whether... It shows yeah. up as internal and external. Is that is that the only thing that he wants to know, or is there something else that he wants to know? I don't know. I, I think I think we might have to say, uh, "I'm sorry, Nathan. Can you can you be more clear with this question? Um, first, with uh, what is actually the, the picture you're painting, and and secondly, with a question. Um, so I'm not sure we're um, I'm not sure we're able to answer it, really. I think essentially uh, Nathan just wants to be reassured that um, he's not uh, penalised for it. Um, and I, I can't see any, any way in which he would be penalised. No, but he, he doesn't actually mention that anywhere. The, the, there's there's not that question in it, which is why I, I'd mm. like him to actually ask the, the question clearly. Um, you know, we've we've said that the probably these will show up as redirects on the Google Search Console, um, and. Whether they're internal or external will really depend on how these things are set up. Um, and we can't tell or we can't understand what's going on in terms of what's being right, redirected to, to what. So, um, yeah, Nathan, please, um, please give us a, a, a better picture and be a little bit clearer uh, whether there, there is a... a a, a big question or a question we're missing here. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, any more on this one? Let's move on to the next. Number three on our run list from Jennifer Darby. 
Core Web Vitals are becoming ranking signals in May 2021. Um, what are everyone's thoughts on this? Well, uh, earlier I, I, I was talking to Jim about this and my thoughts are that this uh, this is something that's going to clobber um, a small number of sites, a relatively small number of sites, um, because that's what happens with all Google updates. Um, the chances are that those sites should know who they are in this case, because not normally uh, with a, a Google update, um, it just happens. Um, and then you've got to clear up after it. But if you have um, if you have bad UX user experience uh, according to these three uh, measures, which I'm going to have to read off the, the screen because I always forget what they are. Uh, there's LCP, largest content, contentful paint, which is a... Uh, supposedly a measure of loading performance, uh, first input delay, uh, which is a measure of in interactivity, and cumulative layout shift, which is, uh, it's, yeah, it's, this is the, the most difficult one to, to describe. It's visual stability. It's, it's to do with how the, uh, how the page builds um, and if uh, components move around, um, ruining uh, the, 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 user experience um, <clears throat> now you can you can measure these uh, you can go off and measure it, measure these um, <clears throat> excuse me there's a report in uh, Google search console um, you can use um, Google Lighthouse although if you use Lighthouse uh, one of the uh, one of the measures I think it's FID uh, is not actually in Google uh, Google Lighthouse. Uh, you have to use something else, which Google rather helpfully says is about the same, or worse to that effect. Um, so you can you can do this. Um, there's also a, uh, so some of the uh, sorry. You, you you can go off and re and, and and measure these. Um, you can find out if your site is within danger of uh, being harmed by. Uh, the update. If you're, if you are, uh, if you are performing very badly, there's a very good argument that you should do something about it. Um, if it's marginal, you may, you may come to the conclusion that this, that Core Web Vitals, although they are undoubtedly going to be important because uh, Google has been banging on about user experience for years. And they've finally got around to finding uh, some sort of way of measuring it. Um, so it's it's likely to be quite important, but there are 200 odd other uh, factors in the Google algorithm. So you know it's not going to be uh, the be all and end all unless you have really bad core web vitals. Um, so I think that um, you've uh, you've got to. You've got to have a look, um, have a look at the site, uh, do some measurements, see if the uh, see if the user ex experience is really bad, um, and then decide what needs to be fixed. You then got to say, is it going to cost a whole ton of money to fix them? Um, and some people I've talked to have said that in the case of um, smaller sites it may well be cheap to do a redesign rather than fix the uh, uh fix if it was a a a, 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 a wordpress site fix the theme um it's something that you'd have to do you'd have to get some quotes in on on fixing these things um so in some cases you may decide just to let it run and until may later in the year see how it pans out see if you get a hit See if the hit, uh, see see if the site um, um, recovers after the hit. 
Um, so it's, it's all a bit of a, um, it depends. Yeah, so Jennifer, my take on this is, this is SEOs going on about Core Web Vitals. They're going to sell this shit. They're going to be writing about this shit. They're going to be filling everything up with this shit. It's pretty much shit. Um, if your site can be accessed and visible within about four seconds, you're, you're going to be fine. Um, we've seen this shit come out from Google so many bloody times. Remember HTTPS, you know, moving away. It's now a ranking signal, blah, 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 blah. But Google is not going to drop stuff that is relevant from the search result, right? And we've seen this with HTTPS and not even mobile. Um, and Google's even switched to mobile first. And you've seen it now still um, for the odd occasional thing where the best search result is not mobile friendly. It's not on HTTPS and it's still displayed position one for you. Uh, it even Google then also even brought out a workaround to actually, uh, if you're opening up a mobile, it even then offers you an option um, uh, to actually make it uh, the, 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 the page that you're looking at mobile friendly. You tap it on your phone and Google then works its own little magic and resizes it and fits it and everything to your phone. So what I'm saying here is take a chill pill. As long as your site uh, is is. Uh, live, <laughs> um, it can be accessed, like just go into your analytics and just check out like on your average page, on your average thing, on your on your main pages, if they can be open and visible inside of four seconds. Okay. Um, that is pretty much the crux of this. Right. And it has always been. But the point what I'm trying to also say is every couple of years, uh, we've been telling you this for years. Now it's a ranking signal. And then, but you, you know, you've got to understand they won't take the best possible like content and stuff out of the search results because it's loading in five seconds. They're not going to take WebMed down or Wikipedia or freaking Amazon or whatever the case may be down because it's loaded up under four seconds and maybe something slightly above the fold or below the fold. So, Let's just look at this in, 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 in the reality of it. Take a, take a breather and just, if you can, you know, um, and, and some parts of your site are running slow because of some clunky plug-in or whatever the case may be, then, then yeah, it's good to work on it. But don't freak out that, like, in the next month, your, your site's going to completely disappear. It, it's not going to happen like that. Thank you, yeah. Tim. Yeah, and I think it's one of the those things that you it, it's good to have a site that scores well, but you know you do that for user experience more than anything else. I mean, if your site is takes five seconds to load, and if you can reduce that to two or even one, that's a huge difference. But if your site is already loading at two point six seconds, and you manage to reduce it to two point five seconds, well, you know. Is that a meaningful way to invest your time and energy and money? So it's a question of prioritizing and ensuring that you concentrate on the biggest impact that a change can make to user experience. So how do you use these figures to f essentially to figure out the biggest issues, the lowest hanging fruit, if you like, to improve your site's performance? And to provide better, uh, to provide better user experience, and wouldn't worry too much about rankings as such. Thank you, Mr. Taki. Okay, let's um, move on. Um, unless anyone wants a second shot at this. Okay, let's move on to number four in our run list. It's from Kunjal Chohan. It's titled JavaScript Main Header Navigation Menu. I, th I think we answered this last week, didn't we? 
Anyway, uh, let me read it out and maybe we'll see something different. Uh, is it bad if the main header navigation menu drop down isn't resulting uh, um, with the um, JavaScript turned off? I checked the rendered HTML in that, however, and I can see the, the drop down items. So, can this be ignored or should the drop down still happen um, with JavaScript turned off? Well, I agree with um, Michael Martinez in that um, check the site for accessibility. And if if it passes, then I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, yes, I agree, Michael Martinez. When in doubt, um, Michael will um, will tell us. <laughs> okay, um, here we are. It's David G. Borgia. Borgia. Um, it's titled "Making Sure My Site Doesn't Hit Any Stumbling Blocks." He said, "In the military, we have something called a spot check. Uh, it is." when we inspect some aspect of what we are supposed to be doing correctly to make sure it is done. And if not, uh, that we can correct it and attempt to prevent bad things from happening in the future. In the uh, context of SEO, is there a phrase or a service sort of like a spot check or tuna where someone who knows what they're doing uh, can look at uh, a um, WordPress site and make sure that everything is updated and running smoothly and doing the procedural things to make sure that nothing is hindering it from ranking. My host guy, who is good at what he does when, when he does, uh, has been distracted for many months. It's not his primary job. And I'm not confident that my site is running as optimally as possible. I'm not referring to on-page SEO or anything like that. I've got those basics down. I'm just looking to make sure that my site doesn't hit any stumbling blocks, uh, site map, schema, et cetera, working properly. Uh, any recommendations for services? Well, um, an SEO will do a site audit for you. Um, and check out all those technical things um, and tell you whether you've got them set up correctly. Um, you can spend a lot of money on a uh, on a site audit, but as you've got a uh, a WordPress site, um, you will probably find that you can get a good audit done for not so much money. I'll I shan't tell you, I shan't give you any idea of what, what that should be, but if you shop around and try and find someone who sounds as if they know what they're doing, um, you should be able to get that done fairly competitively. Um, or you can do it yourself. Um, but I think you're asking, uh, I think you're asking for a service or a person, aren't you, somewhere in here. Um, there are lots of tools to uh to to do this you can uh, you can you can do your your own audit with a whole list of free tools uh which will uh, which will involve you um going for uh g doing research and putting a list together and plodding through which probably won't be sensible use of your time uh you could uh use um any number of free or paid tools, um, you know. So, so, you know, the obvious one is that that, that I use to to keep a, a rough eye, uh, an eye on my my client sites is, is SEMrush, but lots of others out there. The problem with um, the automated. Um, uh, approach is that you've got to know where, got to know what the results mean. Um, they will come up with 
with a number of uh, recommendations which they will tend to say are important because they have to because it's it's important that they don't play down things that are uh, are a problem um, but you need someone who knows what they're doing to interpret results so you know find find someone who knows what they're doing um, and pay them and let them do a site audit for you thank you david anybody else Yeah, I think that's uh, good. And there's also a great conversation uh, on the uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. All right, let's uh, move on to number uh, six on our run list from Cameron Taylor. He said, am I thinking straight? What would you recommend? He said, the client's hosting server got bought out by another company that is headquartered uh, in France. Their hosting server will also move to France. Uh, my thoughts uh, would uh, tell me to, to switch to a hosting server based in the uh, US because the, the client's business uh, only serves uh, US customers. Am I thinking straight? What would you recommend? Honestly, I don't think it'll be a massive issue, but uh, from a costing point of view, if they're moving to France, they're going to be headquartered in France, so it's going to be in euros, it's going to be more expensive with the exchange rate into dollars, uh, just move back to the US. <laughs> yeah. Depends, depends, doesn't it, on the... On how uh, on how cheap these guys are in France, but I I I, I agree with you, Tim. I think that there's likely to be a uh, a price hit in here uh, somewhere. So uh, yeah, um, I think you're probably better off moving to to the back to the US, although you've got the time and expense of actually the move, potentially the the time and expense of making the move. Um, I guess with your customers in um, in France, uh, your your customers in the US and your server in France, it might be worth using a, a CDN, as someone said in the the community answers. But I suspect you'll you'll end up looking at the money and say saying. Me. Oh my yeah, just oh my god, you know, just like don't ever think this way. Just move, just just switch to a US host. You're gonna find it cheaper anyway, guaranteed, freaking guaranteed. Plus, um, all online services. Uh, I think you'll also have to pay uh, VAT now. Um, ah, yeah, there's, it's all a mess. It's it's all a freaking mess, man. Uh, with the EU now um, and and the UK and online and this like just switch it just switch it like no pain no hassle just don't overthink it just freaking move it man end of yeah I'd switch too um, in addition there are potential issues with data protection um, you know if if your client site um, holds um, customer information for example then you know, it can get a bit tricky um if oh yeah that's a big one forgot about that yeah so i definitely move to a us host in this case so it's official um it's moved to a us host um okay this is number seven on our run list it's from hugh vu uh, he said, I have keywords where I'm not happy with the, the rankings. Uh, hello, all. Uh, long time lurker, first time asker. He said, I have keywords where I'm not happy with the rankings, but are already part of um, existing content. I'm currently thinking of starting a new page dedicated to that keyword as opposed to editing the existing page, but I'm worried about keyword cannibalization 
and multiple uh, pages with the same keyword. Um, how uh, do I approach things uh, in advance? Um, I oh, know. I'm going to do it and it depends. Um, it depends on the, uh, the main theme of the, of the page you're looking at. Is, is this, is this, um, can I, can I use pink fluffy elephants, Tim? Yeah. If, if this, I don't know if, it's copyrighted. <laughs> if this is a, a page about pink fluffy elephants, um, and it's, uh, it, it, it's, uh, for some reason, ranking for uh, for uh, green fluffy warthogs, uh, but not pink fluffy elephants. I would go and write some more content on that page and make it better. Um, if this is about um, about cuddly toys, um, and you've got sections about green fluffy warthogs and pink fluffy elephants and whatever else on it then I would set up a new page for it. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about uh, keyword cannibalization. If you get the, um, if you get the, the new content, um, well, uh, the quality of the new content um, high enough, um, then it will, it should outrank your, your old underperforming page. No problem at all. Um, if you've got, depending again, depending on the the nature of the page, if it's got sections uh, that will naturally disappear, you know, if you if you take out the your pink fluffy elephants page and write a bigger page about it, then maybe it would make sense to take take out the pink, the underperforming pink fluffy elephants uh, section uh, and make a link to the. Uh, to, to the to the new page but if that's going to make your content look awkward um you know why have we got this one uh, one section of uh, pink fluffy elephants missing um <clears throat> i wouldn't bother you know i just leave, leave the underperforming section um there um so yeah it's a bit it depends there are lots of ways of doing it and um i i think the biggest thing is is this the main theme for the page? If it's the main theme for the page, then don't write another one. Um, otherwise, I don't think you can go too wrong, providing you you write some better quality content than you, you have at the moment. Excellent. Thank you, David. I think that'll yeah. do it for that one. I'll go ahead, Mr. Tony. Yeah, I'm now just going to say, um, essentially, don't worry about keyword cannibalization. And you know what would you do if you were if you weren't worried about it? And do that. Yeah. Okay. So will we move on to number eight on our run list? I'm interpreting that as a yes. Another one from Nathan Gidai. Um, he said again, uh, should I use 301 or canonical tag. He said, a bunch of pages on my site belong to a different site of mine. Content creator error in the past to duplicate uh, uh, a blog post in an effort to gain more traffic. Should I redirect, uh, 301 redirect them to the relevant site instead of using a canonical tag? Uh, they do have some traffic. I'm considering deleting them and using a 301. Yeah, well, if they're a duplicate of the original, just 301 them to the to the original. Yeah, because then you, yeah, you, you don't want to, yeah, just 301, end of, delete. Uh, I agree. Yeah, I think um, he returns to say that, you know, guess some canonical, some 301. Um, I think in this situation, I would say 301 all the way. Because if you're going to use canonical, you're going to have two versions, sort of two pages, presumably on two different sites. 
and saying, okay, this the other side is the actual, you know, proper true location of this content. Um, but in this case, if presumably the aim is to really consolidate everything to a to one site, then you want to make sure that all the traffic goes to that site. And to do that, you would need to do 301 redirects. So, you know, I'm still, I'm unsure why he thinks that there are some cases for using canonicalization, because I, I can't really see a use case for that in this instance. Thank you, Mrs. Taki. It's also, also, I think it's worth pointing out that um, one is a, a, a hint um, which Google may or may not, Googlebot may or may not uh, pay any attention to, the hint. Um, uh, but um, the 301 is a, a, an actual forced action that happens regardless of whether um, whether Googlebot wants, uh, wants it or not. All right, let's move on to number uh, eight on our run list. Um, it's from Hina Faraz. Uh, it's titled Low Word Count Error on the Last Page of Shop. It's, she said, hi, can anybody uh, explain how to resolve a low word count error on the last page of shop? or in the product category page, which has one product. I did uh, an SEO audit uh, on Uber Suggest, uh, uh, which is um, one of those tools um, offered by Neil Patel. Oh my God, she just mentioned him. <laughs> yeah um yeah <laughs> i wonder if hina knows like how neil's neil's viewed by the seo community but anyway um <laughs> so typically some categories depending on what kind of cms you use literally um you know uh, doesn't doesn't actually have anything on page it literally then just shows you know your then your products within that category or different subcategories you know within that um, but you know uh, it's for putting low word count aside because you are looking at a tool um, so you're looking at a tool that's telling you low low word count now you and also you're looking at this taking it as gospel but anyway, it's not really. Um, you look at the biggest um, seller on the market, which is like Amazon, and you open up any one of their top line categories and there is zero word count on there, uh, exactly like you. However, I always do like, from a user perspective, depending on what it is, is, giving a brief explanation um, on, on uh, especially like it depends on what the, the shopping site is or, or whatever the site is. I always do like to have um, uh, the site put a brief explanation on what is on page or what, you know, if it's something interesting or, or something different, I don't know, like rental properties and how to filter it and you can, you know what I mean? So anyway, um most cms's you you can just um uh get your developer to add in a content block uh either at the beginning of the page or the bottom of the page or the side wherever um and then you can give a brief uh a brief overview introduction to that particular category don't do it just for word count you know what i mean you know you should be doing this for the user if you want to um, but just remember, the world's biggest online marketplace doesn't have a word count on there. So um, 
you know, it, just because a tool tells you to, you 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 know, <laughs> don't uh, don't do something just because a tool tells you to. Look at the site and see what the user needs. Thank you, Tim. I missed most of that, but certainly the the bit about um, being careful what a, uh, about what a tool tells you is uh, definitely to, definitely a, a good tip. You're saying that Neil Patel is a tool? Yes, mate. <laughs> I should just laugh and nod. All right. Um, I don't know how, like, I mean, I've got to give it to, is it Hina? I've got to give it to Hina. If she actually read a piece of his content, she must have diligently clicked through all 25 pop-ups to get to that page. <laughs> All right. Well, if we have no more, I uh, hit the button here and uh, it's that time again. It's thank you for watching time. We'll be back uh, at the same time next week uh, to do this uh, all again. Uh, but for now, we can't go without thanking uh, people like uh, Michael Martinez, Michael Stricker, um, um, Brenda Malone, um, Perry Bernard, uh, Richard Hearn, pe people who uh, answer questions day in and day out uh, through the week and make uh, a SEO questions uh, such a, a valuable um, resource. And of course, you guys. Um, you turn up uh, every week, um, uh, 404 uh, episodes so far. That must translate into about 10 years, I reckon. I think, anyway, whatever, whatever it is. Anyway, we'll be back uh, at the last time. If I can find the right button here to, to just to press, um, we can turn this off. <laughs>